Hello, I'm Brittany Walker, a nurse practitioner student at Auburn University. I'm coming to you today to talk about pediatric enuresis. This is a common finding in practice that is defined as urinary incontinence or involuntary voiding of urine that occurs more than twice per month. This can either happen during the daytime or nighttime. Daytime urinary incontinence, also known as diurnal enuresis, is typically diagnosed at age five years or older and nighttime urinary incontinence, also known as nocturnal enuresis, is typically diagnosed at seven years or older. Risk factors found in pediatric enuresis include the male gender, familial bedwetting that is typically with the first degree relative, having an introverted or shy personality, impeding stress such as starting a new school, spending the night off away from home, or welcoming a new sibling. Also could be presence of sleep disorders, acute constipation, and diagnoses such as diabetes mellitus, urinary tract infections, seizure disorders, and um, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. When completing a workup for this diagnosis, it is important to ask three key questions. The first question to ask is whether the patient has had a recent change in his or her urinary patterns to include complaints of painful urination. This is used to determine if the patient is having complications with enuresis secondary to a urinary tract infection or a disruption in routine. The second question to ask would be if the, if the patient has had any new stressors to occur or if there's been a noticeable change in the patient's behavior. This question is asked to determine if the cause of the enuresis is of psychosocial origin. Finally, the third key question to ask is if the patient has had any recent changes in bowel habits to include specifics about abdominal pain and constipation. This question is important when assessing the cause of enuresis because when a patient has issues with constipation, it is common for there to be an increase in pressure on the bladder, leading to the enuresis. During physical examination, there are three key areas to assess in order to achieve the information needed for the diagnosis. The examination should begin with a complete abdominal assessment, and this is needed to assess for an enlarged bladder or kidneys and a fecal mass or impaction. The second area of physical exam to assess is the genitourinary exam. This assessment is needed to assess for hypospadias, epispadias, or phimosis in males, or vaginitis, labial adhesions, or evidence of abuse in females. Finally, the third key area of assessment on the physical exam is a thorough psychiatric examination. This assessment is needed to determine for a presence of fidgeting, anxiety, depression, or behavioral concerns that could potentially be the underlying cause of the enuresis. During, depending on the case and the cause of the enuresis, the physical examination findings will vary. Based on these findings, diagnostic tests, and history of present illness, the treatment focus will be on the underlying cause. Behavior modifications is commonly the first line treatment to include positive reinforcement, bladder training, scheduled wakening, and drinking patterns. It's common and proven effective to also use an enuresis bed alarm to combat problems with nocturnal enuresis. Pharmacological management that is commonly used in practice is the use of desmopressin acetate. If the pediatric enuresis is resistant to previous treatment options, the patient may be started on amipramine. It is common that the bed alarms and medication routes of treatment are more effective, but behavioral modifications are still proven to be effective. If it is anticipated that the patient will have a full recovery, which most do from the enuresis, as long as the treatment progression is structured. Alarms are found to have the highest success rates for long-term management and desmopressin is found to be the most effective for short-term management. When educating a parent about the diagnosis of enuresis and how to manage the diagnosis, the education should be focused on behavioral interventions. Three key, in three key intervention areas to address are encouraging the patient to participate in routine drinking patterns that includes a reduction of fluid intake the hours prior to sleep, encouraging routine voiding, as well as scheduling a voiding time prior to bedtime, and finally using a reward system for the lack of incontinent episodes rather than shaming or punishing for an incontinent episode. Thank you.